some of you are interesting in how do you get free in this world today? Well, it's not easy to do, and you may never get completely free, but you need to try to get as free from fleshly bondage as you can so you can live a sanctified spiritual life to the Lord. One thing to remember trying to get free is that you can start right now today saving as much money as you can and don't waste money on the things of the flesh, the things of the world that you don't need. You don't need to drive a Trans Am or a super expensive Cadillac. Pray to get what car the Lord wants you to have and then work to get it paid off. Don't just pay it the interest on it and month after month, save as much money as you can to pay it off till you own it and keep it. If you have to keep it 10 years and keep getting it fixed, well, don't go into debt. Uh, if you don't go into debt on credit cards, if you owe credit cards and pay them off. If you're going to go to school, if you have to pay a bunch of high tuitions and you're going to go in deep debt to get a master's degree or something, well, pray about that because you may not need that. It may be better for you just to get a, a vocation or a job, but be sure and pray about it. Don't live for the flesh. It's pretty basic and simple if you think about it, but today people don't live logically. Even nature teaches you some things, but people are taught and tempted all the time through advertisements and Everybody wants to have the most expensive up-to-date phone and clothes. And that's all vanity, vanity of the flesh. And it makes these big companies selling this stuff rich. And it makes you a slave to the devil, to your flesh forever. So don't fall for that. You know, you can have the things you need, but you don't have to have expensive, exorbitant things. And it's okay to have a place to live. It's okay to have food and and shelter and clothing and the car and you have to have a job but don't go into debt for anything that you don't need and most of the things that you do need you can wait until you save up enough money to get them don't go into debt that's the worst thing you can do is to go into debt and you can save a little bit of money i don't care how much of a budget you're on you can save a dollar a day if you had to and put it in a bank put it in some kind of a savings box or something don't give it away to other people keep it for yourself now if the lord tells you to help somebody occasionally help them but don't let other people bleed you dry don't give your money to preachers and these charities and stuff they only send about 10 percent of it they spend on the actual getting done what they say they're using it for they use it for themselves to drive nice cars live in nice homes to travel to fly on airplanes and go on vacations it's just a, a way to for them to have easy living off of your back to get free it was hard satan doesn't want God's people to be free. He wants to keep you a slave because then you have to stay in the flesh and you're under somebody else telling you when to go to work and what to do. And you can't get any time, Harley, to spend in the spirit. So back in the old days, I guess it's old days, Harlan and I are old timers. Harlan's already gone home and I'm, I'm going to be there in a few years. I'm an old timer myself. But back in those days, you could buy an old house and fix it up and sell it and make a little profit. And back in those days, you could get a car and fix it up and drive it for five or 10 years, you know, and everything's computerized now and houses are so expensive. Now it's hard to do that. They used to teach people to have a savings account. They don't teach people to save money anymore. They tell them to spend money and put it on their credit cards. Well, that's to make themselves rich and you poor. And so don't be looking for things that you don't need. You don't need a three or $400 Fitbit watch. If you need a what do you call it? A fitness training watch? Well, get one for $20. You know, if you need a good car, get one for, you know, a good used one, whatever the Lord shows you. If you want a new one, get one that you can pay off in a couple of years or so. Don't buy a car that costs twice as much as you need. And uh, so it's really basic, but mostly you need to pray to the Lord and he will show you what to get and what not to get. And he will help you get free if you will help yourself according to his guidance. Live for God. Live for a spiritual life. This flesh life is going to be short-lived, and you're going to, it's going to be gone before you know it. And if you don't have any treasures built up in heaven and all your treasures are here on the earth, then you're going to be a very sad person in the end. I remember Harlan, he told me when he became first got filled with the Spirit, the Lord told him to get out of debt, get off the dunghill. And he said, don't buy anything until you save up the money. So say you needed a washer, a dryer, a car, whatever. Well, then start putting money in a, a jar in your kitchen or somewhere every day. Put a dollar in there. Whenever you get any extra money, put it in there 
And after you get up enough money to buy the item, then buy it. If it's a car, it might be hard to do or a house. Don't buy a house or a car until the Lord shows you and get the one he shows you and get as much money as you can to pay down on it. And then try to pay it off as soon as you can. Don't live a debt life because you're in debt to the devil. Don't live after the flesh. Don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now you can have the things you need. You don't have to live a pauper's life, a miserable life. It's just the principle in it. Don't live after the flesh. Don't be extravagant and save all you can. Not so you can have a good retirement to live after the flesh, but so you can have freedom to live after the spirit. You don't work for the flesh, you work for the spirit. It's the purpose that you do something and that end will bring you out to the thing that you love and you live for. I hope I'm explaining this. It seems so simple after Harlan and I went through it. We lived so poor for so many years and the devil always tried to take everything we had. He gave us a hard time but, and we saved all that we could. And then, you know, when we retired, we got our social security and that added to it and it really helped. So now, we had enough money to live a moderate lifestyle. We don't live in a big fancy place and we don't drive fancy cars and we don't go out and eat, which is a waste. Plus that breaks your sanctification. And if you have to eat because you're a working person, then do what you have to do, but you don't have to be extravagant in anything you do. And then we had enough money by the grace of God that we have enough to advertise a little to get the message out and to get our needs in a good, comfortable way. And we don't have any medical expenses or anything like that. So it helps us. And it's just, it's amazing what a different life you can live. If, and you don't worry every night when you lay down, oh, how am I going to pay my bills? What if the economy crashes? What if you owe all this stuff and you can't pay for your house or your car or the furniture that you bought on credit and the jewelry you bought on credit and you're going to lose it all anyway? Then what are you going to do? You don't have any savings. You need to live frugally between you and the Lord and he will bless you and he will help you if you have the right purpose in mind. I hope I've answered your questions. If I haven't, please ask me and I'll try to do the best I can. Sons.